everyone. Welcome to my presentation. In this talk, I will show what we have done to extend Flink string job to edge computing devices with much lower footprint. I will show how we cut the memory consumption down below 10 megabytes while keep fully compatible with the Flink circle. This is Yu Jun from Baidu. I work in the IoT department of Baidu Cloud. Our business is mainly around connecting, activating, and empowering IoT devices. Here, the goal is to run Flink string job on most of the DH devices. It may be a gateway, it may be a camera, it may be an autonomous car, etc. We run real-time monitoring near where the data is generated and response to alerts fast without a run trip to the cloud. We do data filtering and aggregation in the field before data is sent to the cloud to save the bandwidth. However, there are a few problems to run native Flink job on those devices. The first and the most important one is the limited resources. The devices may have unstable network connection, may have very limited data plan, limited disk space. However, in terms of, of string job, the most critical issue is the memory. As far as we know, more than half of those devices don't even have a 500 megabyte of free memory. This makes it nearly impossible to deploy a free cluster on it, not to mention the jobs. The second issue is deployment. As we know, each device is usually deployed in the field at a scale. Hence, investigating each issue is very expensive. So we need to make sure deploying job to those devices is as smooth as possible. However, to run a native Flink job, Java needs to be installed first, then run a bunch of components, such as job manager, task manager, etc. Those are okay in the cloud, but somewhat heavy on the edge. To tackle those issues, we did the following two jobs. First, to adjust the memory issue, we implemented a new and memory efficient Flink Runner framework. We call it Quick. Currently, JVM plays a big role in the Flink's memory consumption. We choose a different but more efficient language to do the job. Here, Golang was selected. Go is much more efficient than JVM in terms of memory. Also, Golang has a good support for cross-platform. Cross-comparison is very easy. And this has a mature ecosystem, so we don't need to do everything from scratch. Quick framework includes every functionality needed during runtime, like rendering, time and watermark, system operators, built in functions, fault tolerance, type system, connectors, serialization, and deserialization and so on. Second, to minimize the runtime dependency, we separate the job generation from runtime and move it into the cloud. Job generation is heavy and has a bunch of dependencies. We make each job an independent 
independent executable. It is statically linked in the cloud, sent to H via network. Hence, there's no runtime dependency. Here is the process of how a circle job is translated into an exe. Start with the circle job, which is actually a JSON document. Contains a source definition, like where the data come from, data format, and schema. Contains information about the sync definition, and of course, the circle statement. Once source and the syncs are registered into the catalog, the circle statement is sent to the path, validate, and optimize phase. Here we leverage Frank's functionality. This is how we make Quick fully compatible with Frank's circle interface. Optimization module outputs the optimized logic plan. Here, we re-implement the CodeGen module, which generates the GoLang instead of a Java user function for each operator. Hence, we got a list of string transformations with user function in GoLang. The composite module composites the string transformations into a concrete GoLang frank program. Connect each operator with each. Initialize and start operators in the correct order. Set up checkpoint coordinator, etc. The output is the main goal. The output is the main goal source file. The main goal is then built against the quick framework for the specified OS and the CPU architecture. Finally, we get the job executable. This diagram shows how each component within the job interact with each other. Each blue box is an operator. Checkpoint coordinator is a special operator. We run each operator in a Go routine. Operators are connected with a buffer Go channel message, watermark, and checkpoint barriers are all sent via the channel. Think operators start first, while source operators start last. We leverage the blocking feature of a buffer channel as our back project me mechanism. Checkpoint coordinator periodically inject the checkpoint barriers into each source operator. Each, source of each operator snapshot is state to the storage and then forward the barrier to downstream. Once sync operator finishes saving the state, it forwards barrier back to the checkpoint coordinator. Once checkpoint coordinator receives a checkpoint barrier, which signals that every operator has successfully saved its state for this barrier. It committed the check checkpoint, then inject a special message to each source operator as the notify checkpoint completes notification. As it flows through the DAG, operators finish the two phase commit. This is how we support use defined function. As you know, the runtime is in GoLang, but the circle engine is in Java. So the main challenge is how the circle engine recognize UDF written in Go. To be specific, how do we generate a Java UDF instance corresponding to the GoLang function and finally register it into the catalog? Here we introduce, introduce two new modules. In the pass and the validate phase, the UDF source code is passed and validated. Make sure the function has the right syntax. 
and implement the required UDF interface. The signature is then extracted. The Gen Java UDF module generates corresponding Java UDF classes according to the UDF signature on the fly. Here we can only map the signature, not the actual logic, which means we only generate the Java UDF classes with the right method defined, but the implementation is empty. Therefore, we need to skip the cycle optimization by setting the its deterministic function to false. Otherwise, it may be incorrectly reduced if the inputs are all are constants. The Java UDF classes is then loaded, instantiated, and finally registered, registered into the catalog. Hence, we can make the circle engine recognize our Golan UDF. During the comparison, the Golan source code is put into the build directory and compare with together with the main goal and the quick framework. So the actual logic is compiled into the final exe. I think I have introduced the main architecture of the system. Here is what we are now in terms of functionality. First, quick provides frank compatible string circle API. As you can see, they are actually using the same server engine. Second, to be, to be extensible, in addition to the circle API, we support user defined function. User can write their own scalar, aggregate, and the table functions in Golem. Third, for connectors, we support Kafka, Phi, MQTT, stand input, stand output. By the way, MQTT is a widely used transmission protocol in IoT scenario. For the state backends, we currently support local file system. About the performance, for the memory usage, for a typical filter and aggregate job, it takes less than, less than 10 megabytes for memory. Which is, uh, which is affordable for most of the devices. We measured the throughput on the uh, Raspberry Pi 4. It's got more than 400,000 messages per second. On the powerful cloud server, it reached more than 700,000 messages per second. Quick job generally in the cloud need to be sent to each device over the net. So the size of the job files is also an important consideration. The uncompressed EXE is less than 15 megabytes. After GZIP, it's about 4 megabytes of size. So it will not take too much time and bandwidth to send them to each devices. As we see, job executable is statically linked. It depends on nothing, so each device just needs to download it and run it. No need to install this or that. In the near future, we are going to support the parallelism. Currently, QuickJob does not support the parallelism. Each operator has only one instance. That's why a cloud server with 40 Cores are not significantly faster than um, Raspberry Pi. In the future, we need to support the parallelism to fully utilize the computing power to achieve higher, higher throughput. Users should be able to set the parallelism when start a job and be able to restart the job with a different parallelism. Okay, that's um, most of what I want to show. Uh, before, uh, I think during the Q&A, you can take a minute to try out our quick job generator at the URL. It will build a job 
executable and download to your laptop. The UI is in Chinese, but it should be OK. Since generate a job is just a click away, it provides a bunch of job examples there. Just pick one and click the Generate Executable button. Then you are done. Also, you can reach me by the email address at any time. Now, let's see if you have any questions.